All right, let's see if you got the answers correct for the last test yourself on polarity. Let's go through those answers together. So what I asked you to do was identify the slightly positive and slightly negative areas on these molecules, on water and acetone, and then draw in the dipole arrows on each molecule, and then determine whether or not water was polar or nonpolar, and whether or not acetone was polar or nonpolar. Let's try it. With water, we know that oxygen is the more electronegative atom between oxygen and hydrogen. So we're going to draw a slightly negative above oxygen and slightly positive regions by hydrogens. Now that we know where the electrons like to hang out, we should draw an arrow above the bonds where the electrons are going. The electrons are all heading towards oxygen. So we're going to draw an arrow towards oxygen. The last thing we need to do is draw a plus on the butt for the arrows by the hydrogens. In this case, if we're trying to determine whether or not water is overall polar or overall nonpolar, we first need to go through the list of things that make a molecule nonpolar. The first thing that makes a molecule nonpolar is whether or not the atoms are the same. In this case, oxygen is not the same as hydrogen, so that rules that out. The next thing that makes a molecule nonpolar is if we have carbon-hydrogen bonds. Well, I don't see any carbon attached to those hydrogens, just an oxygen, so that rules that out as well. The last thing that can make a molecule overall nonpolar is if all the vectors cancel out, or if all the dipole arrows cancel out. So in this case, we're looking at two dipole arrows going like this. They're pointing in the same direction, not opposite from each other. That means they're actually additive. That means that you'd actually have an overall dipole arrow like that. So we do, in this case, have a polar molecule with water. Let's try acetone. Acetone has a bunch of different bonds, and we don't necessarily have to draw in for all of them, but I'm, go I'm gonna show you a few, at least. First, let's look at the carbon oxygen bond. Between carbon and oxygen, oxygen is more electronegative according to the periodic table trends, so we're going to put a slightly negative next to oxygen. We're also going to put a slightly positive next to that carbon, since all the electrons are wanting to hang out with oxygen in this bond. We're going to draw an arrow pointing towards the direction of where the electrons want to be, and that happens to be towards oxygen. Put a plus on the butt for carbon. Now we also have some other bonds that are the same. So between carbon and carbon, those are the same. That's one of our examples of a nonpolar bond. So we can't draw a dipole arrow for carbon-carbon bonds because it's the same atom. So there is nothing here and there is nothing here for us to draw. There's an equal sharing of electrons between those carbons. How about these bonds? We have carbon-hydrogen bonds on either side. Another rule for nonpolar bonding is if a molecule has carbon hydrogens. So in this case, these carbon hydrogen bonds are also nonpolar. We can't draw a dipole arrow for something that has equal sharing of electrons. Therefore, the only dipole arrow we see is this one. If that's the case, there's no vector to cancel out the one going up, going towards oxygen. So here, acetone is also a polar molecule. Interesting. Now let's think about the trend we saw in the previous video. Water stayed on the plate for a much longer time than acetone did. Water does not have any nonpolar regions, is what we would call it. Water is strictly a polar molecule. There are two polar bonds. However, in acetone, we have one polar bond, and actually, we also have a lot of region within this molecule that is nonpolar. All of this is nonpolar. Hmm. So all of that nonpolar region for a polar overall molecule might just have something to do with the trend we saw, where acetone, 
evaporated a lot faster than water did. For more information, check out my IMF video, Intermolecular Forces video, to explain why acetone has a lower boiling point than water does. In other words, it evaporates a lot faster than water does. See you later. No ducks, no glory.